Hi, I'm Eric Mieni, and this is Breaking New Ground, where we look at housing and how it affects you. Thank you for watching. One of the major obstacles to housing delivery is finance. Many poor South Africans are considered unbankable and therefore not eligible for loans to buy houses. Thankfully, that's changing, and the most active agent of that change is the National Housing Finance Corporation. This government agency apparently acts as the banker to the National Department of Housing. Let's see how it does its work. One of the great success stories of the NHFC has been within the social housing market. As with developments in Clip Town, Soweto, social housing provides rental and rent to buy properties for those working close to the larger cities but who do not qualify for an RDP house. What's the relationship between the provincial government and the NHFC? Uh, the relationship is based on the, a program called uh, social housing that is implemented by the province in <laughs> Gauteng. We've got uh, an institutional subsidy that is called Institutional Subsidy Program, which is part of the fund that the, the department is assisting people with. Mm -hmm. So the fund is designed in such a way that we come in as government to give a portion of the total development cost. Okay. Uh, instead of giving 100% of the required amount, probably will give 60%. Then the NHFC will come in to assist with the 40%. Ah. And since the NHFC was set up, how yeah. has it impacted on provincial uh, housing uh, delivery? Yeah, in Gauteng, we, we have a number of social housing projects that are scattered all over the province. And the majority of them are in the inner city of Johannesburg. And most of them, they've benefited from the NHFC because the quality of the houses that are developed under social housing are much higher than what you see with the other programs. How many projects has Houting done in this, uh, in this way? It's more than 10. I'm sure we're talking about 20 social housing projects within Houting as a whole. What would happen to your housing delivery plans if the NHFC were to close tomorrow? Obviously, a scheme like social housing, as you can see around what we can do with it, it's going to collapse mm. because we've got challenges where you want to house people who do not earn a lot of money. It's difficult for the individual to go to a financial institution like a bank to get a financial assistance. So through government, we come in with the subsidy money. Mm -hmm. Then the NHFC comes with the top of finance to assist to develop a product that is, as you can see around here, that is nice looking and you know it's conducive for bringing up your family. Mm. And it brings that vibrant within the, the housing scheme. What rules govern the relationship between the NHFC and the provincial government? When we look at the business plan of the housing institution, we always check where are they going to get the additional amount because we'll see how much it's going to cost to develop a project. Then look at the amount that the department can afford to give to the housing institution. Then it becomes the responsibility of individual housing institutions to have a relationship, sign an agreement with the NHFC for the top of finance. Let me just get this right. The government decides we need to build a complex like this. Yes. They then find a housing institution that can do that. The housing institution does the business plan, says, okay, this is gonna be 130 million. We have from the government, say, 80 million. Where are we gonna get the 50 million? The banks are not necessarily gonna come in because it's high risk. Then they go to the NA NHFC, yes. which then says, oh, we have 30 million, but we can go to the bank for the balance of 20 million, yes. and then this thing gets made, and it's financed, and it moves forward. Yes. Well, thank you for clarifying all of this and coming on BNG. Thank you. Thank <laughs> yeah. you very much for having me. Sure. Mandla Ngumalo is a young entrepreneur who previously rented a one-room space in White City, Soweto. This project provides an inspiring environment that is still very affordable. So how long have you been uh, living here now? Um, since this place was open to people to come and stay here, it was in 2006, um, the first week of April. Yeah. Yes. It's that uh, yeah, vivid in your memory. Close to two years now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How has it impacted, if in any way, in your life? Uh, it has changed my life because I was confirmed to a one-bedroom house, so to say, or a one-room. So after I applied and moved in here, my mind get explored. 
living in one room, the only thing that you have there is just the bed, the TV, hmm. and that's it, and the curtains. Yeah. So in a big place like this, you, you are able to explore your mind to buy picture frames on the hmm. wall and do the kitchen unit and do a lot of things that yeah. you want to explore. So it was an eye-opener for me to say, wow, this is the feeling. As soon as I move to my dream house, the big house, mm. it means I'm going to have more things than what I have now. Yeah. Yes. How do you see your future from here? Uh, from here, I'm a very energetic person, very decisive and outgoing person. So mm. it's going to be bright. So this is just the stepping stone for me. As they say in Chinese proverb, a journey of a thousand steps begins with a single step. So mm. that's where I'm going. Uh, I heard our director say, uh, what about your car? And he said, no, it's okay. Is it uh, quite a safe space then? Yeah, the security. You see, with Joshko, they made it clear that security, it becomes the first priority for the residents that are living here. Mm -hmm. No any other car can be allowed to come inside without the parking sticker. And uh, there's so many things, because the security guys, they know the people that are living here. Mm -hmm. I can leave it down there for 24 hours without locking it. I guarantee you nothing will happen to it. Wow. Yes. Wow. It's, that must be great. I mean, safety and kids and family, Definitely. that's the first thing on your mind. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking to us here at BNG. And I'm, 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 yeah, it sounds to me like uh, this has been a really good thing. Thank you so much, Eric. Sure. Social housing is an integral part of the Clip Town development program which plans to create up to 8,000 units of various types in this community. As project manager, Kheri Holzhausen is tasked with facilitating funding as well as ensuring delivery and high quality. How long has the NHFC been in existence? Eric, the NHFC was started 10 years ago by national government, essentially as a, as a funding institution um, to assist with the banks coming into the area to play where they've normally been redlining before. Mm. However, um, a lot has changed since the signing of the finance charter between government and the banks, um, but the banks still need a bit of comfort, a bit of cushion, and that's where the NHFC comes in and plays an essential role. What makes the NHFC necessary for housing delivery in South Africa? Eric, it's necessary because there is essentially a gap, the so-called gap housing where um, it's difficult for people um, in those income brackets to find finance uh, through the normal channels in Which this country. Which income brackets would those be? I'm talking income brackets on social housing, people earning between 1,500 and 7,500 rand. Mm -hmm. And for the so-called gap housing, slightly higher, higher than that, up to 15,000 income bracket a month, which is where the NHFC mandate lies. Where's the problem with them getting houses? The problem is that, well, first of all, there's not a lot of stock around in those income brackets. Um, the cost of building has gone up tremendously, as you would probably know. We're talking building inflation of up to 25% per annum. Um, if you look at the median price of a house currently in this country, it's around about 600,000 per house, which means that a, 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 um, an income level of about 20,000 is required on a monthly basis on joint income for that family to be able to afford a house of 600,000, which essentially puts 80% of the, uh, of the population in this country out of contention for those houses. So how many projects have you been involved in financing thus far? Eric, I'd say um, at this stage, after 10 years, at least about 100 projects countrywide, uh, similar projects to these also called social housing. Cliptown. Yeah. But Cliptown is quite unique, surely. Cliptown is unique, Eric, in the sense that um, what the NHFC did here was what was not normally uh, on our mandate to do. In this instance, uh, the province were in a corner in terms of getting housing delivery done here before a certain time. Mm. And we've had discussions with them and they then appointed the NSFC to be an implementing agent and project manager on this site as well, besides being a funder as well. Do you yeah. guys also finance individuals, for instance, who have a certain amount of money mm. want to build their own houses or do you only stay with big developments like this? Yeah. Our mandate up to now has been to only fund as a wholesale funder. Mm -hmm. However, you're probably aware that um, last year, um, in his speech to the nation, um, the president, Tabu Mbeki, indicated that the NSFC will be transformed to, uh, transformed to become a so-called housing bank. Mm -hmm. That process is currently underway, um, and the retail banking arm is currently being created for the NSFC. Okay. Where we would be able to, for the first time, offer later in the year a retail product in terms of a bond for, for end users directly. Okay, well, thank you very much for being on BNG. Thank you, Eric. All right. It's been a pleasure. Yeah.
Although the retail wing of the National Housing Finance Corporation will launch properly towards the end of the year, they've started approving individuals who will benefit from its existence. Lerat and Ronima Kueya both hold decent jobs, but even their combined salary does not allow them a housing loan to purchase the property they are renting. As one of the first recipients of the NHFC's retail segment, their dream has now been realized. And Kiberakako, Kenyan Richards in Pretoria. Uh, we've been renting the house for almost a year now, and we decided that we should buy the house because uh, this place seems convenient for us. It's near to my workplace. And again, Kiplekelo Horing Ididimete, Haina Botata at all. That is why we decided buying a house here in Mabopani. It's very difficult for Rena to get a home loan to the bank and get a different loan. That is why our home agent is a loan to NHFC. Because we have a six-month bank statement, we have a ID, we have a salary advice, and then in three days' time, we got the answer from the NHFC, and we are approved. And then, kekam koro kono ko kara home loan yaro nakate. Ri tu mese tata koro rebeli home loan e yako NHFC because ke first time rin na linju and then rin na leba na at least ba na bar na bata na lele kai leba na ngamolo na linju ebi tangare na ke tu mese tata tata and then le my husband is also happy so finally we've got our own home where. Everyone aka LHFC ke company of foreign home loans too. Uh, most of the people are waiting to go on. The client is saying that they apply for financing with the normal normal banks. They are declining with the applications are on. Kaba advice or recover kisa NHFC recover kisa NHFC ho ba thusa ho kera home loans too and. Uh, Kanete ra playa ra ra kenya application mo NHFC ditlante zaga dia tuse ha for an example wo le rato le roni magoya ba ilimba playa ba ilinga ba tuse ha playa la finance ko ko home loans ka three days application abo na kiste ya provide. Ngai tu me la faba tu ba ba ngata ba ba ling desperately looking for home loans ba gang contacta hore kono ba educate ta. Got this NHFC, a two system batwanga ta hokera finance. NHFC can also provide second bond to homeowners who want to improve their houses, maybe doing extensions, renovations, all the all all the stuff. Once the property has been registered into your name, is then when you can apply lang second bond. NHFC also provided. With us here, the National Housing Finance Corporation's headquarters is its CEO, Mr. Samson Moraba. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Eric. I just want us to start with a brief history of the NHFC. Well, the NHFC is a development finance institution set up by government in 1996. Uh, Coincidentally, on the 10th of May, which is uh, the day when we ushered in the new government in 1994, is the same date as mm. when the NHFC was founded, 10th of May. And so now we're about 12 years old as an institution. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, NHFC today, NHFC of yesterday. These are two completely different organizations. Yeah. And, yeah. I was going to ask... Uh, before we go to specific things that you do, how the BNG strategy impacted on your existence as an, a government agency? The BNG strategy actually broadened and actually required us to restructure and to uh, broaden our own mandate, the initial mandate that we had as an institution. Mm -hmm. But what it has done also, it has made our role to be more comprehensive, uh, especially in terms of accelerating both the scale of delivery and also uh, leveraging private sector involvement in this, in this segment of the market. If somebody were to say, what is your primary function? How would you define that? Our primary function is to make uh, housing finance accessible and affordable 
to the low to middle income household market in, in South Africa. Now, it's often said that uh, banks have always found it very difficult or been very highly unwilling to, to go into the market you are trying to service. How do you get them, how did you get them to finally sort of start to change their attitude? Yeah, I, th I think uh, historically what we've seen, uh, especially from inception, was the fact that banks never actually operated in this segment of the market. But precisely that was the gap that government wanted to close by setting us up. Part of our agenda was to ensure that uh, we actually prove the test that this market is viable, it is sustainable, one can do business. It's only after that has happened that the banks are willing to come. But today it's a different ball game. Banks are actually financing social housing projects across the country. On their own, without their you, own. because they've seen that there's business to be made there. Yes, indeed. I think all they need, especially South African banks, um, they normally look at uh, a track record of something that becomes a success and thereafter actually they come voluntarily. What have been the milestones so far with the NHFs? When you look back, which, which peaks bring a smile? Okay, I think there are several. I th to begin with, in the first five years of the NHFC, we provided finance through retail intermediaries. Now, the assumption when we were formed was that there were institutions out there uh, in the private sector. All they needed was financing or funding for housing. But when we started to operate, we realized these were startups, these were emerging mm -hmm. institutions. Firstly, they needed to be capacitated for at least about 18 months to two years. And so we had to provide capacity building loans just to ensure that they actually they operate to a level of viability mm. and thereafter provide project loans. So part of our success is not only in providing funding in areas where there was none before, but is also setting up new institutions and making them robust enough so that some of those actually were taken up by some of the listed companies in the JSE. Mm. And so our success has been two, twofold in that regard. But uh, the third one is the formation of the social housing sector. Mm. We initiated it. In fact, we set up the Social Housing Foundation. Where this was a directive from the ministry for them to provide capacity building in this segment of the market. And thereafter, we provided uh, project financing for all social housing projects, I think, across the country. As I said, today, uh, banks are doing their own business there. And uh, it looks like you know, it's just a normal business. But mm. uh, when we started, there was nothing in that regard. Yeah. Now, uh, I hear you uh, planning on uh, delivering 9,000 units mm. in this coming year. Excited about that? Oh, yes, indeed. I am excited because that's only a single project. There are other projects that we're financing. So that tells me that uh, our delivery by March 2009 will be way above uh, 22,000 part, part of the excitement must be that you now have institutions that uh, can deliver, actually. It's not uh, a hit and miss now. You're not saying, mm. oh, let's see what will happen in of six months. Mm. You know the house will be standing. They'll be pretty strong because of the track record. That's very true. That's, I think part of our uh, program has been to stabilize, especially the institutions within the low to moderate income housing market. Mm. And today, I think we're operating better. We can leverage their capacity. We can partner with other banks even to finance some of those institutions. Mm. And so I think it is a great success from our side. Now, one of the other very exciting developments within the NHFC has to be your retail wing. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a little <clears throat> bit uh, of information around that? Uh, <clears throat> let me say partly the retail wing came as a result of BNG. The minister challenged us to say, yes, you've been making housing finance accessible, but can you deepen your access? Can you deepen your reach in this segment of the market? Because it's true that there are places that even in spite of the financial sector charter, that the banks are not reaching mm -hmm. at all. And therefore, I'm looking upon you, NHFC, to begin initiating that path. And that's when we conceived the idea of going retail. Now, going retail, we were very much mindful to know that we're going to also to bridge a gap which is still, whose needs is still unfulfilled. And in that regard, we have to bring in something that is different. Firstly, our value proposition is slightly different. The kind of instruments that we'll be using there are not just ordinary straight mortgage as we have today. We're, we're becoming more innovative in terms of providing options for the uh, low income communities to ensure that they've got choice in terms of what instruments to use based on their affordability levels. But also 
the challenge that we have in that regard is to enhance our collection mechanism, to make sure that whatever that we lend out actually is, is being repaid. Now we've also partnered with Satokan Post Office to increase the infrastructure, to be able to reach the areas that are quite remote where there are no banks at all, to be able to make sure that the, the housing needs of those people are also serviced. Now I'm a low income to moderate income earner. Yeah. What does the retail wing of the NHFC do for me? Basic steps, <clears throat> what do I get from it? Well, firstly, um, you can come to NHFC comfortably. We also make sure that in our offices, the atmosphere will be that that is welcoming. Mm. And uh, at the same time, our credit criteria will be slightly different. It will be more rigorous based on an understanding because we believe a lot of the risk that is attributed to the segment of the market is our perception risks. But we've got the data which we can model and be able to say, this is the risk that is attached to yourself. On the basis of that, we'll allocate you in terms of, based on your affordability levels or your income levels, we can allocate you to say the size of a loan that you can afford. But not only do we stop there, but in, in terms of a collection mechanism. This is a loan for me to buy a house? Yeah, a loan for you to buy a house. Or build a house, maybe? Um, the, the nature of loans, yes, they start from first buying a house, building a house, or um, it could be renting one as well. Because on, on the other hand, part of our agenda is to deliver our rental stock. Wow. And therefore, some of the people in this segment of the market may not have either the means or they may not actually be interested in actually owning, mm. but they may just be wanting to, to rent. So in that regard, we still have to qualify you. And we're not suggesting by any means, Eric, that uh, if the banks drop you, we will drop you. But we'll do our own rigorous analysis and on that basis uh, qualify you and provide you with the support that you need to a point where either we build a house for you, we build a house for you or through one of our agencies or uh, we provide you with a facility to be able to rent a house through one of um, the clients that we finance. Mm. Now, um, you are in a very a positive market because even though our banks don't know it, worldwide, the best payers are poor. Oh, yes. In fact, that has been proven time and time and again. In fact, um, uh, some people put it this way. Um, there's gold at the bottom of the pyramid. <laughs> and therefore, I think we're here to test that, just to demonstrate to the rest of the market that one can do business on a viable and sustainable basis in this segment of the market. Well, thanks for joining us on BNG, Mr. Morawi. Thank you, Eric. That's it for this edition of Breaking New Ground. Please join us again right here on SABC2 at the same time, 10 p.m. next week, when we bring you the next edition. Please remember to send us photographs of the improvements you've made to your government house, and you could win 10,000 rand in additional materials. Send your pictures to P.O. Box 31201, Bramfontein 2017, or email it to bng at housing.gov.za.